let's look at this idea of solving quadratics in a bit more detail now. Because now we can solve any quadratic equation because we're not just dealing with real numbers anymore. Something like this. x squared plus 3x plus 7 equals 0. Now in the past we get to this point, we put it in the quadratic form and we get the square root of negative 19 and we'd go, oh well, that, that can't be done. No solutions. When in reality it's no real solutions. We can now find solutions because that third, the square root of minus 19, we can now simplify because we know the square root of negative one is i. So we simplify our third and there's our answer. Minus three plus or minus the square root of 19 i all over two. Now, whether you actually write it as two separate ones or leave it as plus or minus, I mean, it's no difference to when we're dealing with normal quadratic equations. Sometimes we just leave it as plus or minus. But of course now we can complete the square on any quadratic and create the difference of two squares. Everything can now be turned into the difference of two squares. Let's do the same quadratic. x squared plus 3x plus 7. If I did the difference of two squares, well, what do we do? We would create it so it's half the coefficient of x. That's the key number here. Half the coefficient of x would be 3 on 2. So we know when we complete this square, we get x plus 3 on 2 squared. But of course, that's not 7. That's 9 on 4. To make it equal to 7, we have to add 19 on 4. But that now is the difference of two squares. Now, you might not see it as the difference of two squares, but if I write it like that, we can see it's now the difference of two squares. Instead of writing it as 19 on 4, I write it as minus 19 on 4 i squared. Difference of two squares, so it becomes x plus 3 on 2 plus the square root of 19 on 2 i, x plus 3 on 2 minus the square root of 19 on 2 i. Solving that, we get the same answers we got before. So we can always turn it into difference of two squares. It's just another way of solving quadratics. Okay. Let's now create quadratics. See, here's the thing. Every quadratic with real coefficients, so if all the coefficients are real, then we know solutions will appear in conjugate pairs. And that's because of the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula goes plus or minus the square root of. Well, that's going to be the imaginary part. So we're always going to have plus and minus. So we'll have the, both the number and its conjugate as well. In fact, it's not only true for quadratics, it's true for any polynomial. Any polynomial where all the coefficients are real, then the solutions will appear in conjugate pairs. And knowing that then, here we go. We know it can be factorised down to be x minus z, some complex number, times x minus the conjugate. If I was to expand that out, I would end up with x squared minus the sum of the number and its conjugate plus the product of the number and its conjugate. Now, when you add a number and its conjugate together, you will end up with twice the real part because the conjugates will cancel out, but you'll, both of the real parts will add together. Now we know the coefficient of x in our quadratic will always be minus twice the real part of the number. And that zz conjugate, well that's what we said was the sum of two squares. That'll be the sum of two squares. All right, we know the solutions are four plus i and four minus i. What was the quadratic it came from? So now I can just write it down pretty much because I can look at it and go, I mean, I'm physically writing it down, but I, I could look at it and go, uh, I know the sum of the roots is going to be twice the real part, which would be eight. And I know the product of the roots becomes the sum of two squares, so in this case, uh, 16 plus one. So my quadratic must have been this, x squared minus 8x plus 17 equals zero. That's the equation that must have given these solutions of four plus i and four minus i. Now, because we're gonna substitute into this quadratic formula and we're gonna get plus or minus the square root of. Now that number now might not be a real number. So we need to know how to find square roots of complex numbers. So a plus ib is the square root of x plus iy. We want to find what is the square root of x plus iy. We're saying the answer is going to be a plus ib. Let's generalize it by doing it this way. If I squared both sides, then I know a plus ib squared is x plus iy. 
I could expand the left hand side out, I would end up with a squared plus twice the product, 2abi, uh, plus the last term squared, but remember i squared is negative one, so we get minus b squared. We know the real part equals the real part, and we know the imaginary part equals the imaginary part. So therefore, a squared minus b squared must be x, and 2ab equals y. We end up with simultaneous equations. If I want to find the square root of minus 12 plus 16i then, I don't have to go through this process every single time. I know, well, a squared minus b squared will be negative 12, the real part, and 2ab will be 16, the imaginary part. I'll make b the subject over there, so b is 8 on a, sub it into the first one. We create, well it's a quartic, but we can treat it like a quadratic because of those powers. So we have a to the power of 4 plus 12a squared minus 64, multiplies together to give negative 64, adds together to give 12. We have two possibilities. a squared equals 4 or a squared equals negative 16. Only one of those is possible, because remember, A and B are representing the real and the imaginary part. And they're always real numbers. The imaginary part is a real number, because it's the coefficient of I. Therefore, this solution A squared equals minus 16 is no good to us. It's got to be the other one. So A will be plus or minus 2. This is probably a bad way of writing it because it implies there are four solutions by writing it this way, but that's not what I mean. B will end up being plus or minus 4. What I'm getting at here is, well, when A is positive 2, B will be positive 4. When A is negative 2, B will be negative 4. I say it's a bad way of writing that because it does imply I've got four solutions that all possibilities are there. So there's my answer. 2 plus 4i plus or minus. Now here's the interesting thing now with square roots. Normally when we see the square root of a number we'd say oh it's the positive square root and we know we'd just write a positive number down. Or if it had a negative in front of it I'd write the negative number down. But when I'm dealing with complex numbers I, I can't do that because this idea of what's a negative number and what's a positive number, remember our family of numbers. The negative numbers only exist in the real number world. It's not true to say negative 2 minus 4i is a negative number. I know that sounds weird, but maybe if I did a different number it might make it clearer. Uh, if say I had uh, 1 minus i, is that a negative number or a positive number? Well how about negative 1 plus i? Is that a negative number or a positive number? So it has no meaning when you're dealing with complex numbers. So when we talk about the square root of a complex number, the answer is plus or minus whatever the result is. So 2 plus 4i. Okay, that's one way of doing it. There's another way of doing it, which I think is quite neat. a plus ib, again, is the square root of x plus iy. Fair enough. And we just saw that. Mm, that's true. But here's what I can do. If I look at that thing, the sum of two squares, here it comes again, the number times its conjugate, sum of two squares, it would be, now that we know what x and y are, a squared minus b squared squared plus 4a squared b squared, expand that out, I would end up with a to the power of 4 plus 2a squared b squared plus b to the power of 4. That is a perfect square. It's a squared plus b squared squared. So what that means is if the square root of x plus iy is a plus ib, then I know the difference of two squares will be the real part, that's what we got here, but I know the sum of the two squares will be, and there it is, that's, that's the square root of it this time, the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's sum of two squares of the number we're finding the square root of. That's a lot quicker. We still get simultaneous equations to play with, but just different simultaneous equations. Now when it comes to the answer, there's a little trick here. You look at the imaginary part. If the imaginary part is positive, then we know our answer for the real and imaginary part will have the same sign. They'll both be positive or they'll both be negative. But if the imaginary part is negative, then they will have a different sign. That will always happen. Let's find that same square root as before. 
minus 12 plus 16. So what I would do this time is I'd say, well, hang on, I know the difference of two squares is the real part, negative 12. I know the sum of two squares is the sum of two squares of the thing I'm finding the square root of. So we got 144 plus 16 squared, 256, I think it is. Add it together, you get 400. But remember, it's the square root of that one we're looking for. Square root of... Uh, 400 is 20. There's my simultaneous equations. Very easy ones because the coefficient of a squared and b squared are both 1 or negative 1. So I can add them together to eliminate one of them. I can subtract to eliminate the other. I get 2a squared is 8. a squared is 4. In this case, I'm not going to say a is plus or minus 2. Um, I'm really only concerned about the number because I can look at the imaginary part here which is 16, which is a positive number, I know the imaginary part of my answer will have the same sign of whatever I choose. So B would end up being 4 when I substitute it back in. So why didn't I worry about the plus or minus? Because I know I'm going to write my answer as plus or minus anyway, because I'm dealing with the square root of a complex number. And so there's my answer. A heck of a lot quicker, in my opinion, to the other method. It does have a little drawback on ones like this. Mind you, the other method has drawbacks on ones like this as well. I reckon it's going to be highly unlikely you'd be asked to find the square root of something like this. You're going to find that most of the things we end up finding square roots of, the way they set questions, they do it quite nice, is these numbers here turn out to be part of a Pythagorean triad. So the numbers fall out quite nicely. This is not part of a Pythagorean triad. Let's see what happens with this one. A squared minus B squared would be the real part, so that's 5. A squared plus B squared, square root of the sum of two squares. 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16, 25 and 16, 41. Mmm, look what happens. So 2A squared is 5 plus the square root of 41. Uh, so A squared is a half of 5 plus the square root of 41, which means A is the square root of 5 plus the square root of 41 over the square root of 2. Well, we like to rationalise denominators. That ends up becoming a half of the square root of 10 plus 2 square root 41. Looks horrible, but that's, it's a number. Of course, now I've got to work out what B is. Substitute back in, uh, b squared then would end up being a half of the square root of negative 10 plus 2 root 41. Therefore, there is my square root of 5 minus 41. Notice the imaginary part was negative, so I knew these signs would be different in the answer. So let's solve the quadratic. That was the whole point of being able to find square roots. Z squared plus 2 plus i z plus 2 minus 2 i. Notice the coefficients here are not real. Therefore, I can't simply say, oh, the answers are going to be in conjugate pairs. That won't happen with this one. But the quadratic formula still works. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Ah, look at this. Ooh, square root of minus 5 plus 12i. By the way, 5 and 12 are part of a Pythagorean triad. 5, 12, 13. Okay, square root of minus 5 plus 12i. Let's work out what it is. Difference of two squares is negative 5. Sum of two squares will be the square root of the sum of two squares. 25 plus 144 is 169. Square root of 169 is 13, which amazingly is the third side of that Pythagorean triad. Not a coincidence. 5, 12, 13. Add them together and we get A is 2. Therefore, B is 3. I know it's going to be positive 3. I look at the imaginary part of what I'm finding the square root of. It's a positive number, so they will have the same sign. I now know my answer. Plus or minus 2 plus 3i. All i got to do is tidy it up. Here's the interesting thing with this particular one, though. Look at the two answers. If you noticed it, you could have got it really quick. Because how do you solve quadratics? Before you go to the quadratic formula, what do you do? You say, what multiplies together to give me the last number? Hmm, what multiplies together to give 2 minus 2i, but adds, adds to give 2 plus i? See? i times minus 2 plus 2i gives you 2 minus 2i. Add them together, you do get 2 plus i. You can do it. Let's say the logical one didn't work, 2 plus i, or oh, 2 and i, that didn't work. 
But the idea still does if you spot it. 1B. Let's solve some quadratics.